how these followers of Jesus received this powerful spirit and moved forward into what has become the Christian tradition. Uh, we're celebrating the beauty of today and this wonderful island and this blue, blue sky and all the green, green grass and the trees that are blossoming and this amazing creation, this amazing life that we've been given to live. So all that in an hour, that's what we're going to do. Would you join with me in this call to worship? O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have established a mighty fortress of what is true. When we look to the heavens, the work of your fingers, what are human beings that you are mindful of us? When we consider the moon and stars that you have established, who are we mortals that you care for us? You have given us dominion over all creation. And even in our failure to be faithful stewards of your world, you care for us. Let us worship the Lord of love. Let us pray. God, we do confess that this beautiful world of ours, we human beings, are in the midst of undermining its stability. So bless us in our efforts to be better stewards of this earth of yours. And while we're at it, help us to be better stewards of each other, recognizing our responsibility and the joy of taking care of one another. So be with us in this church community as we receive your spirit again to guide us in the work of this Jesus of ours who taught us these lessons of love and forgiveness and paying attention to one another and to healing and to being present to those who are ignored. Recreate us as your church in this place, we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. Shall we do that? Yes. Okay. There, there are two little things we're going to pass around as we continue our worship. And, um, well, one is, it's Parsonage dinner time again. So you'll see three little columns. They're all Thursdays at 5.30. A little date at the top. If you have any notion of wanting to do this, you're not exactly sure what your schedule is, just put your name down, one name per block, and we'll have a good time together. And I have the sign up list for uh, coffee hour, uh, usher, readers, readers, and Sunday school help, but that won't start them until um, July. Thank you to Art for making coffee this morning, and Jerry and you, who else, Russia? Nancy? Yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. Okay. Oh, and um, I talked to Charlie Mays, and he is scheduled to be here next Sunday, and he plans to be here next Sunday. Ooh. One way or the other, so. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm realizing as, you know, this is a new year, we're working out the kinks of that. I did not put announcements on here, which is really the most important thing. Right. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you'll notice on the back, there's just three little announcements, and they all have all about the church services, and they, uh, and they all say 10 a.m. So if you're wondering, just carry this around with you for the next few weeks. That'll get us in the groove of 10. Um, other, other announcements that we should be aware of? I know there's some events tomorrow. Yes, Roxanne. Okay. I don't know if I'm quite ready to start the announcements yet, but <laughs> in the community calendar, uh, and we were very excited about this, we were at the museum, uh, we were going to have a wonderful photographic display from Camilla Smith that started in July, if, if anybody paid attention to their community calendar. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm not even my kid. <laughs> Camilla ran into some of those problems with her and felt like she couldn't be uh, available to help put the show up this summer. So we have a, an opening for it and everything listed in the community calendar. And I'll probably have to make this announcement a few times because, you know, we're a smaller group now. But that is not happening, unfortunately. But what is happening is we have two really, and I'm not going to remember the dates right now, but I'll get on it. Um, we have two really exciting um, speakers this summer that are being sponsored by the museum. One will happen at the museum. Uh, Dr. And, uh, Dr. Chris Eby will be here to talk about geology of the islands and the St. Lawrence region. And remind me who else? Dr. Lori and Dr. Lori Rush will be here to talk to talk about uh, the indigenous peoples and the, the early the early settlers of the island. And um, so we're pretty excited. Those will be in the calendar. We'll be announcing them a lot. Uh, but I mostly needed to talk about the fact that we're not going to have our photography. Mm, Thank you, Oxen. Other announcements for our island community? All right, well, we'll oh, go. Oh, okay. oh, never. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, the Legion will be over at the cemetery uh, sometime around 11 tomorrow. And we'll do a ceremony. And then afterwards, there will be food at all. Bring some. <laughs> <laughs> that way, there'll be some. We'll be cross fish and a lot of stuff. So. Mm. Cool. Maybe dish pass. Thank you. Everybody's invited. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, it's great to see everybody. Happy New Year! So, I like to say, if we haven't seen, if you haven't seen each other, you know, I don't know what the proper grindstone greeting is. Like, oh, I haven't seen you in eight months. How you doing? But it's wonderful to be together, and we're going to sing a hymn for the beauty of the earth, which includes the beauty of human community. So we're only going to sing three of these because you got to. Hair down a little bit. So one, two, and four versus one, two, and four. And why don't we just stand up if you can and belt it out?
implore forgiveness, which is another way of saying a prayer of confession. Let us pray together. There is no way to count the number of the misguided, no counting those of us who are deceivers and self-interested, no counting those of us who have broken trust, no counting those of us who have ruined relationships, no counting those of us who spread malice and gossip. Preserve us from putting ourselves above any of these people. I share an unbreakable bond with the least of these, my brothers and sisters. Teach me to trust not in any goodness I think I have, but lead me to obey your goodness like a sheep follows the shepherd. Amen. So God has given us the gift of language. We'll reflect a little bit about language today. Um, and the beautiful thing about language is that it can point to what is true and real. Um, but the bad thing about language is that it can twist what is true into something that we think might be to our own advantage. To spin things that might make us look good even if it means stepping away from what is true. Um, so language is a powerful thing, but more powerful than our language is this truth of God's love for us. Even in our desire to make ourselves look good, God knows who we are as individuals and as a collective community. And God knows where we have failed. And God knows our struggles and our vulnerabilities to want to look better than we are. And the, th the point is, that God loves us, even in our failures. And even in the ways that we know we should maybe try to love, but fail to love. And God loves us even in that. And in that love, God is healing us moving us forward into becoming a people who are committed to love. And that's a beautiful promise that God will transform us and our world into a community that loves one another. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. We've got some lessons. And Dan is going to lead us in the first lesson. If you lost and still fall off, I'll be right. Okay, Numbers 11, 24 through 30. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70, 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was upon him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad, the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out of the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran out and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. And Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? But that all the word, Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord will put his spirit on them. Amen. Our New Testament lesson is similar in the spirit coming on some people that are typically like not church people, like the disciples who were fishermen from Galilee. Second reading is Acts chapter two, verses one through eighteen. A few slight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> took away some of the names of some of the different places that were part of the center. So. <laughs> when the day of the Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. 
And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each, of one, each one was heard speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, in our own languages from distant lands? We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who lived in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I said. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour, pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Amen. So, like I said, we're... Um just getting into the rhythm of a church service, and um, there isn't a children's sermon like on the bulletin, but I see my friend Leah, <laughs> and I don't know Leah, <laughs> Leah, sorry. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite things about Grindstone Church is talking to Leah. So I, I don't know if you're interested, Leah, in coming up and chatting. And I see another little person back there who might want to come up. I don't know. Kind of scary, though. Um, well, yeah, come on up here. Yeah, I have a friend named Leah, so I got a little confused there for a minute, Leah. How you been? Good. Lily, what do you see there? Um, Anybody know what other dog? Charlie's. Charlie's dog, right. Uh, Tao. 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 Um, well, Ty well, Charlie's not on the island yet. We're hoping that he's going to be, he has some health problems, and so we're hoping he'll be here with us next week when we were planning on it. Oh. Well, I'm glad you're here this week. Because I wanted us to talk about um, the kids' table. Did that ever happen to you? Like at a big family gathering? Like the grown-ups are at one table, and the kids are at another table, maybe in a different room. That's how it was for me when I was a kid. No, you're right there. <laughs> That's awesome. Because you know what, it makes, it made me feel like, and of course we would much rather be with the kids to just talk kid stuff, rather than have to listen to what the adults are saying. But maybe that doesn't happen in your cool house. But for me it was a feeling like, We don't have separate rooms. Good, oh that is so good. Well, when you're having dinner together, like a big, if you have people over for dinner. Um, we sit all together. Awesome. Um, yeah, my mom and dad, they had, you know, each of them had a bunch of brothers and sisters, and they had kids, and so they would occasionally all come to our house. 
And then we would get shoved into unusual eating arrangements. And of course, you know, when Jesus, do you remember when Jesus said this? He said, let the little children come to me because they're the ones who are the main part of the kingdom of heaven. And that's pretty startling when you think, like all of us, there are not many kids here. So you're representing the whole kid world out there. So, which is, and how many bigger people are there? Oh, more than yes. And we sort of get the idea that those of us who are older and we say wiser and we have been to school all these years and that we know things and that we are the important people. And the kids, we say, well, you're coming along. Soon you'll be able to do this and that. And the suggestion is that, that there's a difference in importance. But Jesus is saying, you know, those who feel themselves are important are less important. And those who are, you know, set aside at the kids' table are the important ones. So that's a cool thing to think about. And we're going to talk about the spirit that comes down on people. Like, the, like in Jerusalem, the story that Lloyd read, like these the Spirit comes on these Galilean fishermen who are in Jerusalem, the big city, because it's a holiday. And all the people that hear that what the results of the Spirit is, they're speaking on all these foreign languages that they don't know these languages. They're just fishermen. And so everybody says, well, they must be drunk because certainly they couldn't have received this powerful Spirit from God, because they're not important enough to receive that spirit. But God works that way. Like people that are not expected to be the holy ones, people that are not expected to receive the gift of God, they're the ones. So if you ever do find yourself at a kid's table, know that that's the table of honor. Because God is like in the middle of that. Amen? At Old McDonald's Farm? <laughs> well, that's a cool place to be. You know, well, no, if you ever go back to Old McDonald's Farm and you're sitting at the kids' table. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here to help us understand what God is all about. Can we have a little prayer? Is that a good idea? Let's try it out. Okay. Um, do you want to say it with me, or I'll just say it, and then and then we can be praying together. How's that? Dear God. Thank you for your spirit. And thank you for offering it to everyone, but especially those that we don't think is going to be the recipient of your spirit. Thank you for Leah, and for all the kids in this room, and for all the kids out there who are the heart of your spirit. And what do we say after a prayer? Hallelujah, amen. All right. You're awesome, Leah. Thank you for joining me up here. You can stay up here if you want. In fact, you can just take it away. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Awesome. Well, I do want us to think a little bit about, you know, how these two scriptural passages come together. You know, for Moses, you know, they're out in the wilderness. And when this, when this lesson says that they're in a tent, you know, that's the church. It's a moving church. 
they had a tabernacle, or they had to pack it up and move on to the next place. And then there's the camp. And these two, with the unusual name of El Dad and Me Dad, receive the Spirit. But they're not in the church. They're back in the camp. You know, and, it, and the word comes to Moses, like, hey, these two renegade guys are prophesying as if they're important prophets. And Moses says to Joshua, who's reporting this news, like, are you jealous on my account that these two people are prophesying? Which means that they're speaking the words of God to people. And are they authorized to do such a thing? Are they credentialed and do they have the right education in order to make these proclamations as if God is speaking to the community? And Moses, rather than saying, who are these you know, upstarts that are trying to usurp my position as the prophet of Israel? No. He says, are you jealous on my account? Would that all of God's people could hear and receive the Spirit and to be able to, to let it out, to share it. And similarly in Jerusalem, you know, this, this word, this power of spirit that comes in the form of words and to prophesy means that you are offering the word of God. Now, uh, it, that's the role of a preacher. So believe me, this, these texts are coming at me saying, well, what, what gives you the right, Jeff, to speak on behalf of God? Um, rather than Leah, or uh, someone who hasn't had a seminary education. Right? And the, and the point of it is, okay, I have this responsibility, but really, the point of these texts is, the Spirit is falling on all of us. And the way to articulate it is available to all of us. And I may be standing up here offering a word to you, but really where the heart of the Spirit is, is among us. And as I said earlier, language is a two-edged sword it can lead you into what's true and in conversation, be honest and genuine and authentic, but it can also mislead and do damage and hurt. Um, which is why it's important to recognize what I'm about to say, is it coming from the Spirit of God? Am I being true to the Spirit as I live and move and have my being? Is it possible that I'm in this position because am I worthy? And is it my responsibility? And these scriptural passages are telling us yes. The Spirit is coming your way. You know, are we in a position to receive it? You know, are we equipped to translate that spirit not only into words, and words are important, but in how we act and interact and how we accept and invite and affirm? That's the spirit of God that's reaching out to you, and if you feel like, oh, I, that's not my job, <laughs> that's the preacher's job on a Sunday morning, I'm pretty sure these scriptural passages are saying, no, that's, that's not it at all. The Spirit of God is coming your way. No matter how you feel like you are situated in the hierarchy of respectability or not, 
And the instructor seemed to me to be saying, the more you feel like you're down on the chain of uh, you know, who's important, who should be speaking for God, the more likely it is that you're the one that is going to be the powerful speaking spirit. So let's just keep that in mind on this day where we're celebrating. Uh, and we tend to celebrate, like we're Memorial Day, you know, we'll be out there in the cemetery and pointing out people who are important, who serve their country, um, which is a good thing to do, the right thing to do. Um, but as we celebrate those names that we know, you know, there are other names that are forgotten. And you know, part of the scriptural passage is, who are we not celebrating? Who has been forgotten and set aside? And that spirit of God is there to remind us that there are no unimportant people. There are no people that deserve to be forgotten. As we remember on this Memorial Day, let us make sure that all of us are remembered. Let's pray. God, you are our source of life, and it is your spirit we desire to hold on to and to receive, to spread. But we do admit that we fall into the trap of honoring who we feel like are the important people and ignore those who society has decided are less important, undeserving. Shower your spirit upon us so that we might remember that all of your people, especially the ones who have been forgotten and who are the nobodies, that your spirit is seeking them out to honor them. Let us be a part of that honoring and remembering. Give us your spirit, we pray. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So Joan and I have this cool little song for you. Uh, it's not in our uh, hymnal, but it is in a bunch of hymnals. So I'm hoping that some of you know this song. Leah, are you going to sing with us? Yes! Well, come on over here. Do you need the words? You do? You know this song? We're just going to play through the, the chorus. Say, 
If there are people that you're concerned about, situations that you're hopeful about, anxious about, um, and if you feel like you can share it with us as we pray to God, that's a beautiful thing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'd like to pray for our very good friend, Robin, and uh, Davidson, and look forward to her recovering from her surgery and being on the island and to spend the rest of the summer with us. Yes, for Robin Davidson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yes, Bob. Hey, uh, for my friend Larry, who's uh, suffered from bladder cancer after the return of three times. Wow, for Larry. Lord, in your mercy, <laughs> hear our prayers. Go ahead. Here's the loss of my sister. Mm. April 1st. What's her name? Yeah. Gloria. For Dory's sister, Gloria, who passed away at first. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
struggle with cancer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we offer up to you these voices that represents people that we are concerned about. We lift up to you We ask for your spirit to dwell among us so that in our prayer we can understand your power that comes from this unending, abounding resource of love that even in our mortality, in our frailty, that there is no despair because you are with us and your love surrounds us no matter what situation we're in. So pour out that spirit on us and give us the assurance of that, of what that love means for us in our lives. And bless this church in its work and ministry on this island make us all people committed to your way of love even when it's difficult repair that which has been broken in our island network and give that gift to our world where there is division and mistrust, let there be healing and understanding and care for one another. Show us the way, Lord, we pray. We do pray on this Memorial Day for those who have given their lives in service to our country not only in the military, but also those who have served their communities and, and our country in other ways. We pray that we would recommit ourselves to service. Lord, all these things we pray in the knowledge that you hear us, and that you are with us, and that you continue to guide us May we have the grace and the understanding to follow your light. Receive your spirit. And we pray it all in the name of Jesus, our Redeemer, who taught us how to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay Burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, since I lay 
Thank you, Jesus, since I made as we offer to God ourselves and our gifts and the work of this church.
hearing that spirit of the Lord coming your way, be ready to speak it to the people that are hungry to hear and be a part of what brings this island to life in the quest of loving one another. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 And thank you, Art, for coffee. That's <laughs> awesome. Doreen, I was just you said. All right, Doreen, <laughs> the leader of coffee. <laughs>